Welcome to another episode of Optimal Game State. For the last few weeks, I've been doing some Legion Imperialis videos because I've been super excited about what's coming up. We looked through the rules for the infantry and the vehicles, mostly just looking at the profile, looking at the traits, and uh, reading, just seeing what's in the book and finding out what things do. Today, I'm going to look at something slightly different. The focus of this channel always, and sometimes I need to remind myself to pull it back to it, is to get the best two-player game experience we can. For that, sometimes we will end up looking at um, stuff, like elements like painting, or accessories, or bits and pieces like that, but we're also always focused on that idea, the best two-player game that we can get. Today, I'm going to give you a few hints and tricks about ways that I've been putting together my army and kind of painting things and pulling all together. And then a few things that I think are going to be a lot more useful once we actually start uh, into playing the game. The first thing I want to do is I want to mention mediocre hobbies. So Andy here is definitely, definitely the best place you can go to when you are looking into painting up your Legion Imperialis models. I say that because there are some really fantastic videos out there doing amazing jobs. But Andy is really, really focused on keeping it simple and getting it done because these are big armies and watching someone paint a almost perfect version of a 28 millimeter scale at this 10 millimeter scale, while impressive, isn't really useful. Andy on the other hand, Andy on the other hand, really focuses on you know getting through uh, what we have, making it look good on the table, and not worrying too much about every rivet and every little detail being fully painted. As part of that, he did recommend that we paint things on the sprue. I think you can see it in this video. Yeah, so he's he's painting his little guys on the sprue here. He probably goes into a few of the things that uh, I'm about to say to you, but I have a real bad habi habit of skipping ahead. So when I'm watching one of these videos, I'll kind of skip ahead to what I feel is going to be relevant to me. So here are the things that he may have mentioned, but I definitely want to uh, share with you. The first thing is think about how you are going to keep your, uh, your sprues when they're drying. You don't want to put a bunch of contrast paint onto them and then drop them, you know, face down onto the floor somewhere or even onto the table. What I've done here is I've taken, so these are little pegs, things, um, clippers. And the idea, these are this like an airbrush thing. So you paint on the airbrush with this and then you would sit it in here and let it dry. So in this case, what I've done is I've just use those as dividers so I can have the miniatures sitting here. This isn't necessarily the way to do it. Uh, if you have this, it's a great solution, but have a look around and think about how you would keep your models or keep your sprues upright uh, rather than having to let them lie down. That'll just make things a lot simpler for you when you're storing them. All right, the next thing, let's have a look. I have I have a list I'm consulting. Um, all right, oh yeah, so the, let's switch that over here. Oh no, I just dropped this fruit, bear with me. The next thing you need to kind of think about is how you're actually going to construct these sprues. Because unfortunately it isn't straightforward. So first off, this section here, the bottom section, will either be dreadnoughts or walkers. They do need to be assembled and uh, you will be doing them before you actually start work on, on the rest of the infantry. Um, so you do want to, yeah, you're gonna clip them off. You're gonna build them. You're then gonna glue them down onto something like this. So this is a lollipop stick, lots of different phrases for it. Uh, you're probably going to be able to find them in Hobby Lobby or Michaels if you're in the US. Uh, I got these in Soystering and Green, which is a UK firm. Um, 
just something it's just something that you're able to glue them down onto and then you can slowly work through them then after you have finished after you've finished them then you can snap them off because the the little bit of super glue contact is going to be easy and then i would recommend painting your bases separately and then glue them down onto the bases i'm always worried about paint to paint contacts i have had other miniatures where i have done this and they've snapped off but these miniatures are so light and so small it's not going to be a big deal and getting through all of your bases while they don't have models on them is going to be a lot faster and a lot easier so that is something you definitely should be doing the second thing you're going to need to do i haven't looked at the auxiliary yet there might be a similar issue here but these little sections that are missing here were for the missile launchers so you are going to need to clip off the missile launchers tidy them up a little bit and then very carefully glue them back onto the guys on the sprue you're looking for all of your marines to have only a single contact point at the bottom that's the goal i made the mistake of not checking the assault marines you can see up here um, and i don't have i've clipped it off fully but the banner i think also has a connection double check for those uh, and then yeah straighten your swords yeah. the assault marines though in particular i did paint these up before i realized that the tab was there you can see it's clipped here um, and that means there's a little blemish on it, a big blemish. No one's really going to notice, but I am going to have to go back and put a, a, a dab of yellow over it. So, something to keep an eye on there. So we've talked about the sprues. Uh, oh, you can see here I have airbrushed this. Don't do that. Um, I stopped doing that after a while. I used contrast yellow. I I, I didn't listen to Andy who used the imperial fist yellow. I preferred the Yandin yellow. Go whatever works for you. It doesn't really matter. Just slightly different hints. The but airbrushing them gets a different finish to actually taking a paintbrush and just dolloping it on. Um, I would recommend using the paintbrush. It just gives a much better effect. So in the end, what I did was um, I did airbrush it on, and I just realized that I wasn't happy with it. the airbrush basically was giving a nice consistent like a good effect and I just wanted a little bit more of a contrast so I wanted to yeah I wanted the contrast to sink into the recesses and give me that kind of differentiation between it obviously everything was based with a nice white uh, base coat so we can get that kind of bright color out have a watch of Andy's videos he obviously will explain all of this painting stuff a lot better than I will Okay, so build the dreads or the walkers. Watch out for the tap salt marines. Extra marines. All right, this here. This is a finished sprue. I have completed all of the squads. We've got, still got an assault marine. We've got two random tacticals. We still have a plasma. We still have a rocket launcher. And we still have a uh, germinator. What's happening here is... Each of these sprues have a option for a commander. It doesn't make any difference whether they have a commander or not. If you wanted, you could save all your commanders and put them into a single squad. Um, the, uh, the only one where it might actually be a little bit confusing is with the plasma, because the commander for the plasma, I think, has a sword rather than um, an actual plasma gun. But yeah, we have extra options so there are things you can do here the first thing of note is you can actually switch commanders around if you want so here we have one of the commanders so this guy's got a power sword at the bottom we've got a different uh, commander and he's got a chain sword mechanically it doesn't actually make any difference whatsoever uh, so if you want you can switch those around be aware of that we're also in a position where as we get more and more of these, we are going to get more and more spares. So right now on this one, you can see I've got the two tacticals here. Uh, next time when I build some plasma, if I don't use the plasma commander, I will actually have enough for an extra sprue. So I grab it over here. So assuming we do the exact same with the tacticals as we did before, we're going to have those two tacticals left over. And then uh, the, yeah, I think I think this guy was used for the plasma before. So we'll have him 
and we have those two guys and that's five, we put them on our next sprue. From looking at the bases, I think we do actually have I think GW has been putting in one or two extra bases in normally. And the reason I think they're doing that is to avoid situations where they mess up and then we have to contact them and go, look, I don't have enough bases, send me a base. That's a lot of hassle, a lot of effort for them. Often it's better just to include the extra base to avoid that. So fingers crossed there are going to be extra ones in there. If not, hopefully down the line, they will actually release these bases separately, which I suspect will be super popular because personally, I really want to get a with the Crusader Mark armor. Uh, so yeah, I'll probably be getting some 3D printed Crusader armor and then being able to paint them up properly as a Templar Brethren as part of the Imperial Fist. Anyway, that's an aside. We should have some extra bases. We are going to have some extra men. One of the challenges, of course, is having two. You need two. It's all in twos. So uh, units start in fours, and then you increase them in twos. So we might have to sit down and consider how we're building our guys later on to maximize that. Um, like, arguably, if you made all of your plasmas with the commanders, at the end of four sprues, you'd have enough. You could use an extra commander, and then you could do an extra one. But then you're still going to need another two boxes. So there are four sprues before you can actually feel it So to get two out. So stuff like that, maybe don't worry about. The tacticals might be a little bit more interesting. That also has an interesting uh, consequence when it comes to the command squad. So we get we get the exact same set of models every time. A command squad is made with, let's see if we can find them. This is the main commander, this is the banner bearer, this is the apothecary, and then these two guys here. So those two guys, they are different from your average guy because they've got the little plume. We do not need two command squads out of every box. Typically a box is enough for one command squad and then a bunch of other guys. That's gonna get us what we need for our um, our formation. We normally only need one command attachment. As I said, I've got four sprues here because I've got an extra box. I am gonna build two command squads. But one set of these models is gonna be left over. There are a few that I don't think I'm gonna be happy with reusing. So I'm probably not gonna reuse the apothecaries. Um, I'm probably not going to reuse these. You could squeeze in some extra banners if you want. Um, I will say, I think these little things are great. I wish they had done them for the other legions. The infantry boxes do not have any um, transfers, which is a real shame. The vehicle ones do, but obviously they're they, they don't have any uh, banner stuff there. Anyway, that's an aside, it's a little unfortunate, but we're gonna build two out of this set. And we're gonna have a bunch of models left over. So these guys are perfect for um, tactical commanders. They, you know, they've got bolt guns, they fit the bill. The only thing that they have different is the, the little red plume. Personally, I'm probably gonna take one of these guys um, and do him in black instead of what he is and put him on a single base and have him as my Sigismund stand in until Sigismund does actually turn up. And I'm going to deploy him onto the battlefield with a Thunderhawk with just one guy on a single base turning up. It's gonna scare the shit out of my opponent until they realize that I don't have the rules for it. And then they'll just obliterate him with one volley. Not how the story goes, but you know, we can have a little bit of fun with that. We are gonna have pieces left over. We can think about how we use them. We can probably squeeze out a little bit more with uh, if we have some bases. Now, the other thing to think about here, oh, and it does mean we can switch around. So while this one might be the one that the, the book, the build book suggests to include, we have other commanders, so we can switch them around for a little bit of variety if we want. I would also recommend, I haven't started on this guy, but I did on the first one I built, I would recommend painting your path green white. Um, maybe not if you're a white scar, maybe you guys do it in red. The reason why I'm saying this is the 
Command Squad has the Medicaid rule. The Medicaid gives a feel no pain save to anyone close enough to it. You're going to forget it. Um, a, a unit will die, and yeah, you're just not going to think about it, and you're going to completely forget that you've got a feel no pain save. If you paint it white, there's a slightly better chance that you might actually notice that that apothecary is on the table, that he is nearby to uh, the model that you're looking at, and you know, you might it might work. So you find your favorite white. I have a white gray from Vallejo that I use, and then we're going to drop the apothecary white onto it and then do a little few details and then we're good. And then that'll give us a, a slight bit of a hint that it is there. So yeah, we've got a few extra options that we can meddle around with there and see what we can get out. Probably gonna focus on tactical marines, as I said. We're not gonna have enough rocket launchers or we're not gonna have enough terminators to really make a difference. We kind of need, we need 10 before we can actually uh, get some work done with it. So probably not gonna not gonna happen for any of the specialist troops, but we can definitely squeeze out a few more bases of tactical marines, which could be useful to have. Okay, let's switch commanders, positive white, movement trays. Okay, this is a this is Footsore Miniatures and Games, it's the UK company. Uh, they do tons of stuff for Saga, which is another game that I love. And this is the reason that I have this stuff. So this is a movement tray. All they're selling is a single A4 MDF that's been laser cut. And there is also a, um, doo -doo -doo, a piece of cardboard that's also been laser cut behind it. Now, let me show you what it looks like. Oh, and yeah, the price is, okay, this is in euros. We have to see what the, the variation of it is. There are lots of different options of these. Um, different people do different ones. I kind of recommend the, oh, these are Cerisa, by the way. It's quite a popular brand. I recommend these because one, it's a four movement tray, uh, and two, it has cardboard rather than a double MDF. Double MDF works, it works fine but doing the cardboard underneath uh, makes it look a little bit smaller. Nope, oh, that's the wrong scene. Okay, so here we have in my tactical squad and they're in the tray and you can see it's just cardboard underneath and then it's like a single MDF on top. And then these guys go in, go out. Nice nanny. The idea here is if we are playing a big game I'm able to just take these four and like move them straight away. And here we have the same for some dreadnoughts. The idea is that it just it just gets it out fast, you know? Um we are playing a very small scale game, but once you look at it, the number of miniatures we're playing with really pushed this into the um what would you call it? It, it, we're, we're playing orcs. We're, we're playing orcs with like tons of little guys on them. Uh, we are basically playing a swarm list. Uh, I've mentioned Mighty Pops. You can see I'm still working on them there. Then, oh, and yeah, why did I mention it? I finished my guys off with Contrast Basilicanum. So I feel like it gives it like a real kind of gritty look to them. Like they've been, they've been fighting through some real battles. Anyway, that's just my own my own personal preference. That's how I like doing them. One of the other things that I think is kind of useful out of these versions, all the all of the cuts end up with the twenty five millimeter um, base at the end of it. So you get this, and actually, yeah, these do contain six of these. Uh, sorry. One, two, three, four, five, six, as you can see there. So it's just one A4 and one um, cardboard, but it's six in total, which may, and it's six by four, so you're getting 24 tokens out of it for your basing. That doesn't really make sense. Let me skip back and... Tokens. These tokens from GW are absolute trash. They are an embarrassment. GW should be ashamed of themselves. And I'm reasonably sure GW are ashamed of themselves. They have done fantastic tokens before. I don't know what happened. They obviously messed up. I think they know they messed up, although they'll never admit it in public. 
but we now need to work with that. The best approach, absolute best, is to buy acrylic tokens from one of the acrylic companies that are going to be making things. There are a lot of 3D options out there, but personally, I've always found that the acrylic ones look the best. Make sure they're not see-through. Um, Ash from GMG Miniatures did do a recent review where he, uh, what were they? They're like bottle cap toppers or something like that. Little plastic um, stickers that have a little bit of a bubble on them. He glued it on one side and did the same on the other side. So he ended up basically making his tokens into something he could work with. We're going to go a lot simpler. Um, we're basically taking these MDF bases, so little wooden discs. You could probably do it with other stuff. Um, I mean, even a GW 25mm base might get the job done. That's actually what I've done for the objectives here. These are just on 40mm uh, and uh, glued down. For these, I sprayed the MDF with um, black paint. I did, when I was in town today, discover this, which I am super interested in. These, yeah, War Games Illustrated always have a lot of good things. Working with MDF is always tricky. I've seen a lot of recommendations and a lot of guides talking about how you need to seal the wood first. You do this and you do that. What they actually say in there is that um, it depends on the pigmentation of the spray you're using. If you're using a highly pigmented spray, it'll just go on and that'll be it. I think what's happening is the, the, the paint or the... The MDF wood does soak up uh, a little bit of it, but as long as the pigmentation is heavy, you're not going to notice that. I did end up using two different sprays on these, and yeah, I could definitely see the difference. So it is a matter of finding the right spray. Um, there are concerns about warping and all of these things. Um, for what we're doing at this level, that's not really going to be an issue, so I wouldn't worry about it too much. What all we're doing is we're just getting in a nice color, and what I've done here is I've white glued it, PVA glued it on, just to get something to start. Once that dries, and um, once I've got them all down, what I'll probably do is I'll come back later and I'll uh, put a gloss varnish onto it just to kind of try seal the entire thing down. We'll see how that goes. So hopefully I'll have some nice miniatures. Um, there are so many of them that I'm not particularly concerned. If my opponent works out, you know, any particular thing on the back of one of them, I think the chance of that is, is relatively low. Um, they would have to be very, very impressive to be able to recognize the difference between a few of these tokens, especially because there's going to be so many of them. Anyway, we're not going to worry too much about it, but it is in our interest to try keep the back of it regular if we can. Okay. What do we have left to talk about? No, I think that's everything. I've talked about moving trays. I've talked about um, getting tokens done. I've talked a little bit about how to look at Sparoo and Prep it. I do, I haven't seen a lot of people talk about these cards from GW. Okay, so this is, this is the Solar Auxilia one. Um, so on, um, yeah, Andy from Mediocre Robbies does have a Twitch. And I did on one of those Twitch ones ask him to have a quick look through it. There's two of each. There is not, oh, they have a few extra ones that we haven't seen released yet. So the rip your battery, the tarantulas. Um, I think there's many of the others. Oh, there's some of the vehicles or the fires that we know exist, but we haven't seen it yet. I think these are good. I always enjoy these. Um, we don't have any of the knights, and we don't have any of the of the titans. So we might see another pack for those down the line. Uh, I kind of hope GW re-releases these, redoes them, and we know there's another book on the way. So fingers crossed, they actually get around to doing that. If so, if they don't. I have done card creators for some of the other games. I am willing to do that again for this. Um, so if that's something you're interested in, or if you just never got your hands on these, and 
yeah, you want a replacement to them, we can work on something like that. Uh, so please do tell me. Also, if you can think of any other tips or hints or tricks that um, people who are working on this, me included, because I am just a fan like everybody else, please put them in the comments. I would love to hear any tips or tricks that you have for getting your games of Legion Imperialis going and having a good time and anything that we can find out that would speed the game up and keep things going. I have heard a lot of people saying that the game can take some amount of time um, and that the casualties are massive, that people will die in hordes. So that's something to, to look forward to. So we, we are going to end up putting up a lot of miniatures on the board, a lot of bases, but we are going to see them get removed pretty fast. So it sounds like it's going to be a pretty fun game, and I am very much in, looking forward to it. I do have a game scheduled in January. I get a friend who's also started collecting. But my goal, as always, as I always mention, is to make a two-player game. So I am working on my Imperial Fists, I do plan to also put together some Iron Warriors so I can have two lists. I think right now the best target point is to go for 1,250. That um, lets you squeeze in that Warhound Titan if you want and just seems like a good starting point. So that's what I'm gonna do. As I said, um, if you've got any tips or tricks, please do post them in the comments. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you have a great week. Thanks for making it all the way to the end. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Each week I put up a new video talking about one of Games Workshop's specialist games. The goal is always to try and make the best possible two-player experience. If this is something you'd find interesting, please subscribe to the channel and comment to let me know what you'd like to see in future.